Hi everyone, I am Sonia Kuller and this is Cute Little Yankee. And I'm wearing camouflage today because we're talking about something that is sort of in the spirit of the military. Basically, you know, something based uh, developed around the military, which is about these computers and drives and memories. So I'll be talking to you about how we can understand FAT32, XFAT, and NTFS. FAT32 is basically file allocation table 32 bit. XFAT is extensible file allocation table, and NTFS is new technology file system. So let's get started here with understanding um, these concepts. And as I was mentioning, what we will see is that these are three key, but they're different file systems. So there's so much that goes behind the scenes. And there's a cute little hard drive here, um, you know, finder and a hard drive, if you put it in a Mac, floppy disks here. And you can see here that this is what the hard drive looks like. And these are floppy disks. So that's actually what the save button looks like. It's actually like saving. It's also one of the floppy drives that I kind of grew up with initially. And I wanted to kind of show you a little bit of a joke from this guy saying, I think I'm losing my memory. Maybe your SD card is going bad. So nowadays, a lot of our memory is so much of the time when we say, oh, I need more memory. We so much, we don't, we think like in technology, but people actually, um, the older generations thinking in terms of, you know, what they actually remember. Maybe one day we can upload our whole vein on a hard drive. Who knows? Whatever we see. So what a key property is, is that you're going to notice the following. If you have a Windows computer, you can go here and check your properties. Like go to your operating system, your C drive here. And then we can um, right click and go to properties. And then we're going to see that it's our local disk. It is NTFS, New Technology File System. Uh, developed by Microsoft here. So you can probably see that I use up a lot of the storage. But this is what we typically find, you know, on Windows computers, NTFS file service. But, but for hard drives, there's this uh, little handy dandy hard drive that I use a lot. Handy dandy hard drive that's like this. And this is already my F drive on my computer. So what we're going to see is that the C drive is NTFS. F drive is NTFS as well. It's a local disk. Has a lot of capacity here, which I'm used up as well. So whereas this is NTFS, this is also NTFS. So that was sort of a little catch. Uh, but I'm actually going to show you something that is not NTFS. So which of the two will it be, FAT32 or XFAT? What do you think for this SD card? 64 gigabytes SD card. So I'm going to put this in here. And now what we're going to see is once I put it in, this is D drive here that has shown up. And this says SD, XC, so if we do properties here, it's a removable disk. The file system that we see is that it is XFAT, extensible file allocation table. So it's a removable disk. I've used it all out. I kind of maxed it all out. So you might be kind of wondering, well, how do we know what is what or what are the concepts? So why does this stuff all matter? Well, I have a video where this stuff is really important when I was trying to reformat a drive. So all of this stuff kind of matters because I was just finding out a few days ago how to reformat um, the micro SD chip so that I could put it in this little tablet. And Yangshi could also enjoy it too. So to put it in the tablet, I had to reformat a micro SD card. And a micro SD card is typically very, very, it's micro, it's really tiny. So you typ it typically comes with these adapters, you know, it's very tiny, very tiny actually. So I had to reformat it from XFAT to FAT32 so that it could be read by the device. 
So these things are pretty important. And I want to kind of go through um, the concept. And I kind of want to go through all of those things right now and just kind of talk a little bit of an overview about what these all are here. So without further ado, I'm going to kind of talk more about why we saw what we saw. What's the difference between FAT32, XFAT, and NTFS? What is the difference? And credit to Chris Hoffman. Um, who, uh, who wrote this in August 2021. So whether you're formatting an internal drive, an external drive, a USB flash drive, or an SD card, Windows gives you the choice of using three different file systems, NTFS, FAT32, and XFAT. So they tried to go through what these are exactly because, you know, it's not that intuitive. So a file system, so when I'm talking to you guys about these three different file systems, they're basically ways of organizing a drive, like a volume, a device, like, you know, a hard drive or a USB stick, for instance. So it helps you organize it and it specifies how data can be stored on the drive and what types of information you can attach to files, like file names, permissions, and other attributes. So like if we're looking here, what we would see is that like the SD card, it gives you, you know, tools, permissions, you can customize it as well. You have sharing, you have advanced sharing, you have tools, you have all these permissions as well. Um, system errors, optimize and defragment, you have general, you have some advanced things that you can also do. You have properties as well. And if you click properties, you have volumes, driver, details, events that have happened that are timestamped. So what you see for this SD card might be different from what we see for the F um, drive, the external hard drive. So it all differs. Windows supports these three, but NTFS is the most modern file system. It is, after all, called the new technology file system. So NTFS is called, after all, the new technology file system. You know, it's a proprietary journaling file system developed by Microsoft. It is the default file system of the Windows NT family. So it is um, July 1993. And it, what came before it is the file allocation table, the FAT, um, as a preferred, and now it's the preferred file system on Windows. And it's also supported in Linux and BSD, which is Berkeley Software Distribution. Um, so there are lots of things that you can do here. The limits, the, all these properties that you guys can look into more. So basically, Windows uses it for its system drive and, and by default for most non-removable devices. So the NT file system, the new technology, it's the modern file system that Windows likes to use by default. As I showed you, my C drive is in properties, it is NTFS. Tools, hardware, there's so much we can check and do. And it's kind of showing me what's on my um, C drive or other appliances and things there are. So it has file and partition size limits that are so theoretically huge, you won't run up against them. I think I might break that. And it first appeared in consumer versions of Windows with Windows XP, though it originally debuted with Windows NT. And it has modern features that you can't find in FAT32 or XFAT. File permissions for security, a change journal that can help you quickly recover errors if your computer crashes, shadow copies for backups, encryption, disk order limits, hard links, various other features. And they're really important for an OS operating system drive, especially file permissions. So that's why our Windows system partition, our C drive has to be NTFS. Um, so if we have a secondary drive alongside and we want to install programs to it, we should make it NTFS. So if you've installed programs on an external hard drive device like this, for example, you want to make sure it, it is NTFS. And indeed, I was showing you guys that it is, and indeed, I was showing you guys that it is NTFS because my um, F drive is um, NTFS. So whereas this is um, XFAT, my F drive is um, NTFS. I've installed some bit, um, you know, uh, computer software as well. 
but it has advantages, but the disadvantage is compatibility. It'll work with all recent versions of Windows, all the way back to Windows XP, but it has limited compatibility with other operating drives. Um, so Macs instead can only read NTFS drives, but do not write to them. Um, some Linux distributions can have NTFS writing support, but some may be read only, and none of Sony's PlayStation consoles support NTFS. Microsoft's own X Xbox 360 can't read NTFS drives, even though the new Xbox Series X, um, S, and, and One can. And other devices may not support it as much, so it's not so compatible. In terms of compatibility, it works with all versions of Windows, but it can only be read by Mac by default. And it may be read only by default with some Linux distributions. So the no realistic um, file size or partition size limits, but you ideally can only use it mainly for Windows system drive and other internal drives that will just be used with Windows. And then now we can talk about FAT32. File allocation table. It's a file system that is developed for personal computers. It's developed originally in 1977 for use on floppy disks. So I'm, I'm kind of dating myself, pun intended. Hi, Yankee. But basically, um, I remember the floppy disks. Uh, these are... So that's actually like what the, the save button means. This is these old floppy disks um, that were, were used to put memory. It's quite not as big as it, you know, it, you know these huge things could not... Um, hold as much as the modern small data. So I've seen the data shrink over the years. I remember what these floppy disks are. And actually that's what you see in Microsoft with the save button. It's often supported for compatibility reasons by current operating systems of personal computers and many mobile devices and embedded systems. It allows the interchange of data between disparate systems. The increase in disk drive's capacity required three major variants, FAT12, FAT16 and FAT32. So this is the format that we're kind of going to be working with. So our goal is to go from this FAT32, um, to go from XFAT to this FAT32. So that's the kind of mapping that we want to do. We want to do this mapping here. From XFAT to FAT32 for the SD card. So SD cards typically are in XFAT, especially if they're over 32 GB. So if the FAT standard has also been expanded in other ways while generally preserving backward compatibility with existing software. And it's no longer the default file system for Microsoft Windows computers. FAT file systems are still commonly found on floppy disks, flash, and other solid state memory cards and modules, like USB flash drives, as well as many portable and embedded devices. And it's also the standard file system for digital cameras for the DCF um, specification, design rule for camera file system. So there's a lot that goes into this. File allocation 32, 32 bit. It's the oldest of the three file systems available to Windows. And it was introduced all the way back in Windows 95 to replace the older FAT 16, 16 bit file system used in MS-DOS and Windows 3. And it has some advantages and disadvantages. So because it's so old, it's like the standard. And a lot of flash drives we come will often be formatted with FAT32 um, for maximum compatibility across not just modern computers, but other um, devices like game consoles and anything with a USB port. In fact, it's really popular even for Amazon Fire tablets. So, um, so if you got the new HD10, for instance, you'll notice that it needs like FAT32 for you to add in expandable storage there. So, Though it's older, people just, it's a de facto, a lot of people tend to use it, but the, the limitations, um, you know, um, individual files can't be over four gigabytes in size, that's the maximum. And the partition must also be less than eight terabytes. And in the Amazon Fire tablet and a lot of other tablets, a micro SD card that you can insert, I think is only up to one terabyte, which is a lot. But a few years from today, it might not be, seem like a lot. Um, so it may not, it may be uh, less of a limitation unless you're using super high capacity drives as well. So while FAT32 is okay for USB flash drives and other external media, um, you know, you wouldn't want uh, to use FAT32 for an internal drive because it lacks permissions and other security features built into the more modern new technology file system. And modern versions of Windows can't be installed to a drive that has FAT32. 
they must be installed to drives formatted with NTFS because of all the advantages that I mentioned. So it works with all versions of Windows, Macs, Linux, game consoles, anything that has a USB port pretty much uses FAT32. And you know, you can only have four gigabytes um, is the maximum file size that you can have. And the partition size is up to eight terabytes. So use it on removable drives, um, you know, and you, as long as you don't have files larger than four gigabytes. FAT32 is an older file system that's not as efficient as NTFS and doesn't support as big a feature set, but it does offer greater compatibility with other operating systems. So pretty much this though um, was actually what was working on micro SD cards for the uh, Amazon Fire tablet, which, which is what I had found. And I have a whole video about my troubleshooting and going through that. Um, and XFAT is a modern replacement for FAT32 and more devices and operating systems supported than NTFS, but it's not nearly as widespread as FAT32. And this is true as well, because in the Amazon tablet, it typically um, uses FAT32. Or at least that was my experience and I have to convert from XFAT to FAT32 and I have videos kind of explaining that. And lastly, so maybe you might have some of those files like longer videos or something. So maybe you do not want to use FAT32. Um, and then there's extendable um, or extended file allocation table, XFAT. We're gonna talk about what is XFAT? So XFAT is also known as Extensible File Allocation Table, and it's a file system that's introduced by Microsoft in 2006, and it's optimized for flash memory, such as USB flash drives and SD cards. So that's why the micro SD card example, it typically is um, in the format of XFAT. And one of the things I was going to show you is how we can reformat it as FAT32. But XFAT, so extensible file allocation table. It was proprietary till August 28th, 2019. Um, so, okay. So it can be used where NTFS is not a feasible solution. Um, it's been adopted by the SD Association as a defile, um, default file system for SDXC cards larger than 32 GB. So basically, what you'll see is like, for instance, for like an SD card like this, which is like 64 GB. Then what the default will be, and key, see? The default is going to be to put it in an extensible file allocation table. Yeah, you like, you think it's PhD, so that's a treat too, huh? It's a treat for you in some ways. So then what we're going to see is that the SD card will automatically kind of be an XFAT because it's one terabyte. So a lot of these larger SD cards that are more than 32 GB are going to be, like those type of like um, SD cards are going to be in the XFAT. So next I'm going to show you guys about the file allocation table. So this is the default again that we're going to be um, having for SD card. So it came out in 2006 and was added to older versions of Windows with updates to Windows XP and Windows Vista. And it is optimized for flash drives and designed to be a lightweight file system like FAT32, but it doesn't have the extra features and overhead of NTFS. So, so it's optimized for flash drives and it is designed to be a lightweight file system like FAT32, but it doesn't have the extra features and overhead of NTFS and it doesn't have the limitations of FAT32. And um, similar to NTFS, XFAT has very large limits on file and partition sizes. So it's like an upgrade to, um, to FAT32, but FAT32's advantages is its greater compatibility. So it has large limits on file and partition sizes, so you can store files much larger than four gigabytes allowed by FAT32. Like So like the micro SD card that is in um, XFAT as well. I can add lots of files that are bigger in size, like lots of videos or other devices. So while XFAT doesn't quite match FAT32's compatibility, so FAT32 has the compatibility across many devices, including the Amazon Fire HD um, micro SD card. If you need it to be recognized by that, it needs to be in 
fat 32. The default is X fat. So I have a video again, kind of talking about the conversion process. So if X fat doesn't quite match its compatibility, but it is still kind of more compatible than NTFS. So NTFS is the least compatible. FAT32 is the most compatible and XFAT is in the middle. So Mac OS has just read only for NTFS, but has full read and write support for XFAT. And these drives can be accessed for Linux by installing the appropriate software. And devices can be uh, a bit of a mixed bag, like PS5, PS4 support XFAT while the PS3 does not. The Xbox Series X as in one supported, but Xbox 360 does not. So typically, it works with all versions of Windows and modern versions of Mac operating systems, but you need additional software on Linux. And most devices support XFAT rather than support NF NTFS. But some, particularly older ones, may only support FAT32 because this was the oldest one. And there are no realistic file size or partition size limits, unlike FAT32, which has the file size being, you know, four gigabytes and partition size limits of eight terabytes. So you should just use it if you need bigger file sizes and partition limits in FAT32, because FAT32's advantage is the compatibility across devices. And that sometimes you may need to convert it to FAT32, you know, like for the tablets, if you want to expand storage. And if you need more compatibility than NTFS offers, then you would want to use this thing because it allows you to read and write even on Mac, which um, was not the case for um, NTFS. So assuming that every device you want to use a drive with it supports XFAT, you should format your device with XFAT instead of FAT32. So in general, I just want to sum this up before I kind of talk about more about um, the situation between XFAT and um, FAT32 and, and talk a little bit more about those. I just sort of want to kind of talk about the last summary here. So NTFS is ideal for internal drives, like C drives, you know, external hard drives where you're installing a lot of software, you need that capacity. While XFAT is generally ideal for flash drives, as we've seen, my a micro SD card is um, and SD card were um, they were initially in XFAT, and then for other devices, I had to reformat my micro SD card from XFAT to FAT32, and and that's what we need to do. But in some situations, you may, as I was mentioning, you may need to reformat or format an external drive with FAT32 if XFAT isn't supported on a device you need to use it with. So for instance, so as this device says, how do you format the SD cards? So I have videos kind of talking about them. One video is a very quick video um, where I'm just showing how it worked for me. And then you should please do it only for an SD card um, where you have backed up the original data somewhere else, because once you do reformatting, you lose the data. Or if you get a new SD card that has nothing on it, because reformatting will wipe. Please, please, please back up the data. So if, unless it's a new SD card, please back it up before you put it in to your device by reformatting it because reformatting it from one version to another will erase whatever there is on, on it. And that's not good. So please back it up somewhere or just use a new um, SD card. A lot of times, a lot of tools like to use FAT. You see here the Fire HD tablet, the card must be FAT32. So hopefully now you kind of have an idea of what FAT32 is. And I have two videos. One is a really fast video where I kind of talk about downloading a partition assistant, especially because I was trying to move a one terabyte micro SD card to an Amazon Fire tablet, which is really large storage and I had to reformat it. And then the other video is longer and it's troubleshooting and I sort of show the start to finish process. I'm gonna see how we can partition this data. The idea is that we're going to be using this AOMI partition assistant and we're going to be formatting the partition. Ah, formatting the partition. Ah. So that we can go from an XFAT, an extensible file allocation table, all the way 
to a file allocation table. We then we are able to um, use it on this cute little Amazon Fire. Tablet. So thank you guys so much for this. Hi, Yangshi. This cute little Yankee is fast asleep. <laughs> 